get there. Uh, Mario 64 is the game that just keeps on giving sometimes. Absolutely. Got All right, and now we're going to be getting into three, this particular two, game. We're, we're still best th uh, three out of five, correct? Yep, top uh, six. Yes, yes. Yep. So um, we're going to have plenty of time for some possible adaptation. As uh, we saw Tom earlier, uh, who was struggling against Louis Jesus. Uh, I believe that was the matchup. Yes, that was the matchup. But definitely he's a super solid player. We've seen him in Xeno Wi-Fi quite a bit. I'm not sure if these two have a particular matchup history. Maybe our uh, eye in the sky could get us some info on that. I don't know. I don't know who that is among us. But point is, he actually seems to be... Th th this matchup in particular is... Because normally, you know, against Sonic, you don't want to just be, like, running into him. You don't want to just be holding forward. But, like... That is a lot of what Roy just wants to do. And it's also kind of what he does most effectively. So if you hold forward and it works, that's great. That's how you win as Roy. And right now, I don't know, it seems to be working for uh, for Tom. Yeah, like, I don't know. Roy is just so fast sometimes. And with the privilege of having an up B out of shield that sends at a variable angle such as that, he can catch a lot of the mix-ups that were proving uh, that were giving Son that was giving Sonic in trouble against X, where he would spin dash through, would always call him out for trying to homing attack afterward and just get punished over and over and over again. Tom can do the same type of thing, and he seems prepared to do the same type of thing because look at him just raw dash out of these corners. <laughs> He's just running straight at him. Uh, keep in mind, uh, as as we mentioned, Eye in the Sky. Uh, Xeno Wi-Fi 39 was the only time these two players have played, and Tom took it 2-0. Okay, that? well, Sonic being definitely doing better this time around. Uh, has a sizable lead here. Granted, oh god. Um, granted, uh, Roy does have really good damage output, and if he manages to find that one really effective opening, he can dish out so much damage, if not out of stock. But... Roy, I wouldn't call him a glass cannon, but definitely when he gets hit, he can be quite vulnerable. And being a fast faller, he got put up in just the right position for that forward smash to connect. And that's going to be Sonic Bean with a almost full stock lead. And the damage is only going to keep climbing now. No jump on Tom, but he waited for an air dodge that never came. It's the risk of going for uh, trying to wait for an option like that. Sometimes players will just call you out by doing nothing. Can't run so fast. Doing nothing is always optimal. Sometimes like doing nothing is frame zero. You can just you can just wait, and see what happens. I, doing I do nothing is actum as active from frame zero to infinity. That's how good it is. Did he just spam spot dodge? Yeah, I mean, I get the idea behind it. You're trying to spam spot dodge so Sonic Fiend misses, and then you have all the time in the world to go for a charged F smash if you so wish. Uh, unfortunately, like, it was... It's a risk, and the risks just keep on coming with you're at 160 on a rather large stage. Finding a way to catch Sonic is gonna be the trick. Oh yeah, no this is something, we haven't really seen the recovery be a big issue quite yet for Tom, but that's definitely something, you know, before we saw how Sonic Fiend was playing against Tom. Um... Up still? Really? Okay. Oh, neat. Sure. I will say with absolute certainty, I've never seen that move kill. Clearly, you've never spammed up tilt with Sonic the entire game and then finally killed it. 200 yeah, percent whenever my... i play sonic that's how i how i usually do it it's my own fault truly i must learn i must evolve still it's yeah it is the best forward smash yeah the forward smash from um from sonic has been kind of key here just catching those landings from tom uh oh okay I don't know why I said, ooh, I don't know why I got excited. It's the exact same characters on the exact same stage. But anyway, <laughs> moving into game two. Uh, <laughs> See? <laughs> Perfect. Um, 
time with a bit of a stronger start here. Let's see if he can uh, start to adapt and maybe come up with a more effective game plan. At the very least, uh, not get hit by those kill options quite so much. The forward smashes were really what felt like what you know made sure that Sonic Fiend remained on top, just catching his landings. So those like you know just maintaining and watching how he's landing against this character just like that knowing that he had been going for it instead he goes for the double jump and actually counters with a down air getting even more damage uh oh he's saving his line. jump jump very very careful how he's been recovering is that's Ooh. a very dead sonic fiend missing the tech and that's that spells doom against Royce. his double edge dance is all too ready to take stocks at whenever it wants can Roy just up be in that situation i i don't know can he like angle his up b towards the homing attack would that work i don't know if it would kill but it absolutely like uh, that like that'll kill that'll kill mm -hmm. thank you town and city Yeah. Oh, man. It's all coming together if you're Tom. Once again, it's kind of the, the, the crux with Sonic. Whoever takes the first stock, whoever takes that early lead, manages to... It's like your chances of victory just go up so significantly. Ooh! Um, and just like that, that's a three stock for game two. Um, I wonder what... I, I do think that one adjustment that Tom made was he was playing around those kill options that, you know, uh, Sonic Fiend was fishing for a little bit at the end there. Um, but also, I think he just, his, his hits in neutral, he was just able to convert a lot more. Just maybe understood uh, Sonic Fiend's escape options better. He was able to just get good damage. Yeah, you could see in game one that Tom wanted to play an aggressive neutral. He wanted to come forward and hit buttons and make Sonic Fiend panic. And when he... He was able to find those starters a whole lot more often than in game one. Thanks to timing his defensive options pretty pristinely or just knowing when to hold shield and wait. And knowing when to come in and hit buttons. <laughs> run right at Sonic, make him never able to feel comfortable charging Spin Dash. And even if he Spin Dashes through you, it's fine. I will say, Sonic Fiend right now doing an amazing job of spacing around those uh, those moves from Roy. Ooh. He was able to out, like, sort of outspace a few neutral airs and uh, those sorts of moves, but oh, and he's just gone. He's just dead. Oh, and maybe the curse will finally be broken because... Sonic Fiend did lose this stock first and early, and if he can manage to, you know, take this game, it'll be a, uh, definitely a change of tone, you know? But as it stands, I don't know, Tom seems pretty confident. And he looks like he's just ready for any of these defensive, op de any of these defensive habits, whether Sonic Fiend is pressing F tilt or F smash on, upon landing, or buffering an air dodge, he's... He's all over him once he gets that hit, and he's always putting himself to to get there. Like he's never taking a he's never taking a moment to let Sonic Fiend get comfortable. He's always making sure that like, you have to release all of your options and show me your bag of tricks right away, or else you're just gonna get overwhelmed by Roy's absurdly powerful sword. Keeps coming. Zoom back and forth actually manages to work out for Sonic Fiend. Oh, he's stuck at the ledge here. He, I, I, I think that Sonic Fiend has started to figure out the neutral a bit better. Once again, he's doing a great job of spacing around Roy's moves. You know, Roy is a sword character. He has disjoint, he has decent hitboxes, but he definitely has blind spots within those hitboxes. And it feels like that's where Sonic Fiend is exploiting the most. And right as I say that, perhaps the curse will finally be lifted. That's Sonic Fiend taking this, uh taking the second stock first and he now has a substantial lead just in the fact that tom is pressured to take the stock as soon as he can uh, the wow the sour spot not even a blind uh, not a blind spot but still just as much of a curse but okay you know 
we talk about that's that back air might have a sour spot but the final hit of double inch dance does the seems seems to have a quote-unquote sour spot still finding that kill here we finally see the players start to slow down and we reset the tempo that they had been playing at you know, the thing is, though, by slowing down, it feels like perhaps Sonic Fiend actually just managed to get the pace that he's most comfortable with. Okay, right as I say that, Tom, once again, in his face, doing damage, putting him on the ledge. Oh, but a little bit of an overextension, a great air dodge behind, knowing that he was gonna, he was looking for that forward smash. And, uh, got a parry, but the punish was a little bit lacking there. Surprised the down to whiffed at all. And he's... He's back in his element. He knows he he knows Sonic Fiend is gonna be forced into a corner as he forfeits a punish by overextending to the left. Okay, he he ex he burned his jump though. He doesn't have a jump. That's a one spring, two spring. Oh, he doesn't actually go for it. The forward smash doesn't quite connect right there. Uh oh, I don't know if he's gonna be able to. Great job we weaving. And now this is both these guys are they're in the red. That deep forward air finally does it. Sonic Fiend, for the first time ever, managing to win the game after losing the first stock, just by playing extremely patient, extremely well, and exploiting uh, Tom when he when it would cost him the most dearly. Yeah, you can you can point out a couple of missed punishes that were freely available for Tom should he have like figured out the situation a little bit more. I can think of like a, absolutely a missed a uh, missed parry punish that all he got was a grab. A missed, uh, a whiffed homing attack that he let be. But if it's a good job on Sonic Fiend for acknowledging the SD and realizing, you know what, it's Town and City. I have crazy damage output of my own. There's still plenty of plenty of ways for me to win this game. And he's gotten himself counterfeit advantage because of it. I never really respect how fast Sonic's F-Tilt is. But he's been throwing it out after a lot of landings, and it's clipped Tom pushing a little bit too far in a lot of situations. I mean, it's just that it's the, it's the perfect move to do that. You know, it's fast, has decent range, and against a sword character like Roy, being able to, you know, check him before that big move comes out is how you basically outplay him in neutral often. Yeah, forward so frame, frame six with two hits as well frame six and frame eight that'll that'll catch you that'll catch me <laughs> uh, yeah this is kind of where roy is never mind a roy with rage is something to be afraid of but a roy at zero less a little bit less scary <laughs> but a roy with anger that's something also to be scared of Unless you're Sonic, in which case you're just like, yes, please run on me. Please continue just to hold forward. I will bully you all day for this <laughs> mentality. I love it when you are mad. Oh, and he didn't land because he was close to ledge, so he had, was freely able to double jump. All right, this is a juggle situation. I don't believe he has his jump, but go 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 gadget. Let me land. Just, this is how you use dash dancing if you're Sonic. That's, that could be curtains. I mean, <laughs> it might have been curtains before that. This, From this game's start, Sonic Fiend has just felt in control. The fact that, you know, Tom wasn't able to close out that last game, you know, and as we said before, there were a few flubs that might have actually won it for him. And, you know, the fact that Sonic Fiend was the one who took that game has the momentum has the drive and energy. He's just been able to play so, so effectively in this game four, and it's looking like in just a matter of moments, Tom's last life force might be taken from him. But as I say that, actually, that is the first stock from Sonic Team down. It's gonna be a massive, massive climb for him to be able to keep himself alive in this tournament, but maybe he has that, that energy within him. Let's see. And he's still got a little bit of fire in that sword and in that belly, but the same kind of fare that won him game three seals the set for Sonic Fiend. 
dropping that zone and knowing that Tom had usually been going for one type of recovery angle and that would be whatever gets him to ledge. Put yourself right in between yourself and ledge and Roy cannot make it back. And so that's going to be uh, Sonic Fiend moving on in bracket, but Tom doing a really good showing. Uh, and also it's worth knowing that before, apparently the last time these two played, uh, Tom was the one who took it 2-0. And now this time around in top eight, in loser's top six, Sonic Fiend is the one who manages to uh, win pretty convincingly with a 3-1 victory. And he's going to be moving on into the uh, bracket where he was going to face next to the winner of our next match which is going to be uh... Coltman fights we'll, we'll the winner of confirmation. this. Coltman, yes. Coltman. Oh, Coltman fights the winner of this? Yeah. Yep, we move on to winners top, or win losers, excuse me, losers semis, 